So, of course, I thought, well, damn, is this what's gonna take me out? Hey everyone, and welcome to another video. As the title might suggest, this video is going to be informative, and it may be, actually, it will be longer than my previous videos because there is a lot to discuss. Today is the first day where I'm actually feeling like myself again. I wanted to give sort of like a health update with me, just so you know what's going on. Not that I have to do it, but I feel like since you are on this journey with me and it's something that I actually feel comfortable sharing, that you might you might want to know what's happening with your boy. So let me think. February of last year, so February 2023, I was having chest pain. And it's not unusual for me because I deal with anxiety and I have panic attacks sometimes and is not always necessarily associated with stress. That's just the way my body is. It just, it does what it does and I live with it. So I was having chest pain and internally I was thinking, okay, what could it be? Is, 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 it, an, is it a panic attack? Am I having a heart attack? Is it a stroke? Like what's going on? My blood pressure I think was elevated my heart rate, I got a notification on my watch that my heart rate was like 130 something beats a minute and I was stationary. Or maybe it was higher than that. I can't remember at this point. It was alarming and I could not ignore the voice in my head that was saying, you need to go to the emergency room. And going to the emergency room is also not out of the norm for me. Not that I go all the time. However, when I have gone, it's always been sort of like a chest pain. Most of the time it was like a chest pain, chest related issue. And I might discuss what that is in another video because there's a lot going on underneath the hood. I'm healthy, I'm very healthy, but I do have a few issues that have to be assessed uh, periodically. So anyway, I went to the hospital, uh, went to the emergency room, and they saw me right away or as quickly as they could based on the symptoms and my, and my um, vitals. Okay, I actually had to take a look at the discharge papers because I had forgotten, it's been so long, uh, what they did. When I was admitted, my blood pressure was 158 over 76 and my pulse was 134. It wasn't, I mean, it was, it is, it was what it was. They did, a CT scan, an ECG, and an x-ray. And I waited for the results. Now, that took a while to happen. My levels had returned to normal and I got my discharge papers, but prior to that, the doctor came to see me and said there was um, an opacity in the imaging as well as a lung nodule. And I should probably uh, reach out to a pulmonologist to have further diagnosis. So, of course, I thought, well, damn, is this what's going to take me out? Like, barring anything, you know, unforeseen happening, is this it? When I was discharged from the hospital, they gave me a prescription for some medicine, one of which was an inhaler because I was also having difficulties breathing and they figured that would be beneficial. And um, it was, and I was using that inhaler for, a, it was a couple of months. So I, I had to process that and I thought, okay, I need to have someone take a look at this. And I called my primary doctor and asked if they could recommend anyone that they knew in their network. I am a firm believer in when you have a good medical team, um, partner with that team to see if they have colleagues or know of someone that can help you in whatever situation you're facing. So I was recommended a pulmonologist and I scheduled an appointment and I had to wait for that appointment, which 
felt like an eternity. When I finally did see the pulmonologist, we did a breathing test. We discussed my past history and if I have had, if I've ever had COVID or RSV and I've never had COVID. I did have RSV once. I kept trying to think what could cause uh, the nodule to appear uh, in those test results. It was still, uh, it was still too early to, to tell what was going on. They did a breathing test. The breathing test wasn't 100%. It wasn't perfect by any means. It was okay, but a little off. The pulmonologist thought maybe it was some kind of respiratory infection like RSV. And I thought, I hope it was, I hope that it is. They suggested that I get another set of imaging and I did. They eventually gave me a prescription for an inhaler and I took one home with me. I had the second set of imaging completed. Those results came back. The nodule is still there. So February, I had the emergency room visit. I had a meeting with a pulmonologist, I think in June, June or July. Maybe it was later, can't remember. But I know I had ER visit in, Feb in February, pulmonologist visit probably June, July-ish. I had the second set of imaging done. Oh, no, 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 no. February I had the emergency room visit. I had the meeting with the pulmonologist and then they scheduled additional tests to be completed. And I had some blood work to complete to check for any kind of fungal infections and things of that nature. All those tests came back uh, normal. There were two genetic markers that came back that I already knew about from my family history. We had an, a final follow-up. That brings us to the first week of December, which is also when I was doing the Vlogmas videos. Oh, I don't know if you remember, in one of my videos, it was around Comic-Con, I posted a video that I wasn't feeling well and that I had caught the crud from Comic-Con. Well, that whole time, I was still feeling the effects, the shortness of breath from February. It had been, it, had been, it, was, a, it was a persistent cough. So of course I thought, what in the, what's going on? Like seriously, I was feeling okay, was not feeling okay, I was all right, then I wasn't again. So I really didn't know what was going on. I just knew that I was still using the, the inhaler to help me breathe and it just, I, something wasn't right. I just knew something was going on internally that needed to be fixed. Back to December, I had the follow-up with the pulmonologist about the second set of imaging and the other test blood work that was done. All the blood work came back negative. And I had seen the results before my doctor did because I, I have the app. So I saw all the results as they were coming in. And some of the results, I thought, you know, I can't remember. I remember I kept thinking, well, I hope something comes up on the test because that will at least rule out the one thing that I had worried about the most, which would have been uh, cancer. I didn't have any infection. I didn't have any um, issues with allergies and the opacities were still present in my lung as well as the lung nodule. Now, the important thing is that the nodule didn't increase in size from February to December. Had it increased in size, that would have been a bigger issue to diagnose. There was an initial sigh of relief, like, okay, it's, it's, it's stable. But I still have the nodule. I still have the opacities in my lung. And they're foreign. They weren't there when I was born. They weren't there the majority of my life. So why are they there? Why are they present? And the pulmonologists could not give me an answer. They don't know why they're there. It's, it's just, it is what it is. In the meantime, I had bought an air, air purifier, changed the air fresheners that I was using. I had done all that I could do to prevent any sort of irritants from entering my lungs. It could have been caused some irritants. Oh, I don't drink, don't smoke, don't do drugs, none of that. I was just trying to figure out what was happening, why I was having these issues and why it's, why is this stuff in my lung? And 
it just sort of took me out. I was thrilled. I was happy. But at the same time, it had been February to December. It had been several months to get to that, to, to those results. And it just, I needed a break. I had worried so much throughout the year, even though I thought, you know what, I'll be fine. It's okay. But the worry was still there. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't worried or that I didn't think something more serious could happen. I'm very thankful that the results came back the way they did, but I now have extra things to do yearly to check to make sure the nodule and the opacities either remain stable or hopefully dissipate. Now that leaves me with a test that's coming up in April and it's something that I have to monitor going forward until they're no longer an issue. Um, yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, take care.